alcohol, the next court, the announce of the members. I'm, uh, I'm invited to tell, to discuss something about the leader of this uh, migration the protocol. Before starting, first a bit about myself. I'm, I'm a proud owner of uh, Dutch uh, small uh, enterprise now and off. Uh, it's now an off office and NOU, that's my family name. Uh, Actively involved in open office work since 2004, Libre Office, and now since the year, since recently, Libre Office uh, from Conemora Park. Uh, we work uh, on a training center, a Libre Office training center uh, in, in my hometown, Ireland. Uh, and apart from that, I somehow got lost in, in software. There are other things that I more important for me in life. This is uh, basically when I have a boat, I'm happy. Uh, that's one of the basic feelings in my life. I have a small saving investment. That's a picture of, uh, I think, eight years back with my son, seven, six years back with my son at that time. Uh, up there, it's my wife, and it's, uh, how do you say, the daughter of my daughter? Is that right? uh, my daughter. Yeah. It's a granddaughter. It's, uh, uh, it's close to here, and here to the bottom is a, it's a voice for animals, and not only because of the way we treat animals, it's not so fair, but also because of the way we, in general, consume animal products, it's, it's a threat to our health and to the health of the planet, and so forth. So those are the other things that are interesting for me in living, just as a sort of introduction. Now. Uh, who of you is working, has experience with migrations? Some of you do. Okay. Good. And who of you know the LibreOffice Migration Protocol? Who know that it exists? Some do. And who have actually and, uh, taken notice of content? So, we have a good starting point. Um, <coughs> the migration protocol is no rocket science. It's basically a kind of logic and a kind of experience bundled together. We have to talk of uh, what I, half an hour before, which gave good, good examples of what one can expect in, an, uh, in a migration. Um, why do we have a LibreOffice migration protocol? Why was it created in the first place? It gives a sort of reference and it helps building trust uh, as a sort of showcase when people uh, look at LibreOffice at the Document Foundation and they see, okay, there is some experience, there is some uh, some advice and it helps building trust. But that's an important reason that we always have to keep in mind. When we look at the actual uh, components of the migration protocol, to be honest, I have some versions on my laptop, but um, well, let's be somewhere in the marketing section. Do you know uh, on the website where it's actually? Uh, seriously, that must be uh, on the wiki. On the wiki, at least. Everything is on the wiki. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll make sure that I add it to the uh, presentation before I make it available. Before I make it available. The, when, when you look at the headlines in the, in the current migration protocol, it shows LibreOffice, a uh, sort of general section about LibreOffice about migration, and lessons learned and step by step. Uh, about migration. What I will do now is, is uh, walk through the content, the current content of that protocol, uh, uh, give some explanation. I have some remarks myself, and as I announced with the description, short description of this, uh, this, this meeting, this, this well, it's sort of a fantasy, it's not so many presentations. 
what it amounts to is, is the wish to see if there are uh, commands or additions uh, that people say, oh, isn't it wise to add this, or uh, isn't there too much tendency for that to just uh, more general issues so that you can improve your know, stuff. So, the contents. First, it tells about <coughs> just general introduction to LibreOffice. Um, about LibreOffice, the open document format, the work with free fonts, and it, it, it tells about uh, the connectivity features in LibreOffice. And so what you see here, apart from that, it's uh, some general information about LibreOffice. It, it also directly goes into some details that are important for the migration, uh, the connectivity, and the CMIS. Uh, features uh, <coughs> recently the improved possibility to connect uh, to OneDrive, the, uh, the new uh, the Microsoft uh, stuff. The next in the, in the current uh, protocol is about the general migration, uh, and it explains that uh, the Office Suite is an uh, integral part of uh, of, an, uh, of companies' work. Most people use it uh, in, in more or less, and so migration can be very, very complex, uh, which is uh, which means that you have to put a lot of energy in it. On the other hand, the positive side, uh, it, it is an opportunity when you have to go through the processes, when you have to go to, through the tooling, to all kind of stuff. It also is an opportunity for improvements. So, and to so clean up, to remove old stuff. Uh, and as you know, in uh, LibreOffice, we love cleaning up old stuff. We do all the time, basically. It's a joke. Uh, so, also here you see it tells the, the current uh, uh, document uh, also points to some, well, let's say, an advantage of. Uh, some advantage that you can take if you step in a market. The next section in the current uh, protocol, which is about seven, eight pages, it isn't that long. Um, it tells about the features set in LibreOffice. Uh, from experience, we know that the features set in LibreOffice just okay. It covers 95 or maybe more percent of what people use. It also explains that um, there must be a good planning of migration and trainings. At, at the very moment that people, <coughs> uh, when they have had their trainings, that they have the opportunity <coughs> to start working with LibreOffice. Uh, with what I learned, and uh, that we make sure that the first experience is a good one. So it's not that they have uh, had to train and have seen the nice shiny things, and then they have to wait for days or weeks before it's deployed on their own, uh, in their own uh, 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 computer. <coughs> and then when they start, it, they find out that some fonts are missing, or templates are not prepared, or whatever. So, and the first experience will be a good one and as fast as possible, as soon as possible. Um, <coughs> yes, also, um, when we talk about resistance, um, yes, there's always resistance to change in every organization. It depends on, the, uh, on how people work, what they are used to, and always loads of work, some work of extra attention to new stuff. It, it, it's a lot of things. So uh, <coughs> you must be very good aware of this um, resistance and you must, you must pay attention to that too. <coughs> you see there's a small star in that slide. I will come back to that later. Why does it work different than I expected? Oh, good. <coughs> okay. 
Um, then, more in details, step by step through migration. And here we see uh, the word communication. And communication is it, one of the key, uh, key points in the successful migration. Uh, and uh, you have to do it all, in all kind of aspects. Uh, the whole, uh, it starts with explaining, it starts with understanding, because communication is not only explaining but also listening, uh, understanding what people uh, need, uh, what they expect. Uh, and through, throughout the whole process, communication is one of the key uh, actions to take. Um, and one of the things, uh, the message, once the choice is made, if you say, okay, the communication, you, you communicate that it's a strategic move uh, of the organization. It, it's not just another office suite, but there's some real reasoning behind it. Um, and then in the migration protocol, uh, it's about starting the migration process and uh, doing that with, uh, with an, uh, looking at uh, the needed uh, features and doing some uh, checking of processes, etc. Another important step in the whole process is also that uh, the organization moves from the old document standards, the old documents, towards the new open document standard by default. Because it's a key that you uh, work with the document standard that's native for your main office tool. And also it supports one of the strategic advantages it's the independence of uh, vendors. So switching to open document standards is also one of the key points in migration. Another thing mentioned is that you identify technology and leaders or key users in the organization. Once the whole process is, is going on, it's uh, trainings, etc. But you also need people that are able to to help fellow users. And you need people that make use of, let's say, important features or special processes and that have seen that it's good to them so that they can be your ambassadors. So you need to identify those people Basically, of course, in an early stage, get them involved, make sure they are happy and they will have all they need, and so they can help the whole process, which also is part of the communication strategy. Um, and also, the key users can be in different layers in the, in the organization. It can be people just doing uh, the work, but also in the big layers, so managers, uh, team leaders, whatever. Um, you have to look at, at different positions in the organization. And, of course, providing training and support as one of the final uh, topics to handle. So, this is the current, in short, I won't be taking five minutes. This is a short put in the current migration protocol. Uh, it, of course, it gives some more reasoning and some more examples. Um, I have, I myself, have some remarks with this. Uh, what shall I do? Shall I uh, give my own remarks or shall I just see if other people already have ideas, things that are missing? Okay, let me go back to the, to the other sheet. When you look at, 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 the, uh, at the chart, um, when I read the uh, current migration protocol, 
and then the uh, head of resistance to change is supposed to be handled. One of the points that is written there is that there is possibly is a low trust in the organization's management or personal capability to completely manage the change. So what if you chew on that and if you think and you read that and okay now uh, if, if, if that is something that you communicate and maybe organizations that uh, consider to move to lever office uh, and then, uh, how would they uh, how would they experience a message like that is it does it sound positive enough enough what was your idea mark for example isn't it a risk when some manager reads that and he says oh it, 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 it's it's a bit tricky for me or maybe i'm considered to be in, uh, incompetent or things like that i, I think in, in most businesses the, uh, the employees view management yeah, in a not in a very positive way yeah so what I, I think that's probably one aspect of the uh, the changes that you would have to work with, like you know, working with employees and the trust between them and whether or not they can do it. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's true when you stay there. Yeah. It's honest. But I, I think you have to be careful in on how you tell it to whom. So I, I'm not sure if it's it, it's really good to just put it like that. I mean, maybe it's okay. But it was one of the things that I noticed in the current protocol that I say, well, maybe it's something that we have to consider to put it in a more positive way. It's an opportunity for management to show how good they are. But many many more staff won't believe that way. So it's one of the things that I was thinking of. Another thing, what I, what I, what I noticed here, when you see the, uh, the, the top star, uh, it's possible to start the process by implementing an impact test. But that's mentioned after the moment that we have started the communication. When I have, uh, for the first time, I have contact with uh, uh, an organization that considers doing migration to labor office uh, and we have some positive first contact uh, it's not that we start with a communication plan but we first start looking at okay uh, how uh, how uh, reasonable how, how is it that we can manage this migration first we do some impact test roughly Quick scan or whatever you know, the name you put on it, and if that gives the trust to yourself as a responsible company and to your partners as a responsible uh, buyers of your services, that it's uh, that it makes a good chance. At that moment, we say, okay, we start with how is our organization and how can we manage communication. So this is another thing that I think might need some little clarification. One addition, uh, when you look at details of the migration process, it makes mention of the documents, it makes mention of the tools, the tooling, additional software, but it doesn't mention the whole workflow. <coughs> it was one of the things that uh, Lothar mentioned also in, in, uh, in his presentation. Uh, when you have salespeople that need to communicate with other organizations or whatever people in an organization that need to do communication with other people, with documents, uh, forward, backward, possibly, whatever. It's really 
uh, it's important to consider those processes early and maybe also to get those people involved because those processes are, uh, well, are some of the key uh, topics to tackle in your whole process. <coughs> Apart from those few remarks, um, I think that the current uh, migration protocol pretty well covers most of the content that we need. Uh, but of course we can always put some more details in it. Um, any ideas about that? But most people don't tip in it. you know the, the migration protocol. Do you, have a, do you have an opinion about the, the, the detail, the level, level of details? I, I think the protocol itself is slightly simplistic in as much that it could point out more areas where potential problems can be found. Yeah. In, in, in any first look at a process, people like to look at it and go, yeah, they've identified that I might have a hole here. Yeah. This, these, these are the things I can see, this is a thorough plan. If it's just do this, do this, do this, without the drawbacks and the whole of the it. It's a bit simplistic. It's, it's, yeah. not, it's not thorough enough. Okay. That's, well, that, that's, that's true. I, mean, I have some incomplete documents uh, with some checklists for various areas and out of my head, top of my head, how do you say it in English? Um, I say I have a list with about 60 or 70 points to check. So that's a bit more than the three or four that are mentioned here. But of course it's in many details. But would it make... Um, I'm not willing to put all my intelligence uh, in the public right here, uh, apart from the fact that it wouldn't make much sense, because when you put, you have to check this and that and that, apart from the words and the information, it also needs experience and expertise. Uh, and maybe a bit more in details could, could, could be fine, I think, to, to make it more trustworthy. Uh, uh, pointing out where the risk factors are, I think, is, is not just, it's not just a process to say these are the steps that need to be taken, yeah. it's these are the steps that need to be taken and be careful because this could be a problem. Yeah. It's, it's pointing out where the um, holes might be. Ideas. You mentioned, is, it, is it possible to start the process by implementing the impact test? I don't know if I understand it right. The question behind this you ask, should I first communicate or plan to communicate and then test the possibility to migrate or where are the main issues? Yep. Or the other way around? Yes. Or internally? Well, what is okay? If it is the right, uh, what is it? Yes, when, when I read the current uh, the current uh, document, it, it gives the impression that you first start to communicate. Yes, not it gives, it tells. Sorry? It tells, not it gives the impression. It tells, yes. I forgot. <laughs> But, but there is a political reason. Uh, Let's say that there is a political reason, but I, I, I'll explain that. Yeah, but, but before you even make the decision with the company, with the customer, the potential customer, that there is anything to communicate, you must have the. Uh, you must know that there's a, there's a good chance of making a successful process. So it, it's a more forward-backward process, uh, which, which is not visible in the documents right now. Yeah, no, but I, 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 I try to understand why it's written that way. So, uh, it's written as a document that, the, the document is based on the assumption that migrating to LibreOffice is not just possible, but migrating to LibreOffice, successfully migrating to LibreOffice is uh, a given fact. Yes. 
not being asked, but a given fact. So it isn't because one of the issues that we have seen, and maybe it's just Italian, uh, I don't know, I mean, is that if you start with the, the impact test that I've called impact test and not pilot test for, for a reason, uh, you know, you never get out of the impact test because uh, uh, with the impact test uh, you will find, uh, of course, you will find problems and then uh, you will go to the migration only when you straighten all the problems. As a migration, we always have problems and it's an ongoing problem solving okay. process. I, I understand your point. Uh, you have to be careful not to get stuck in that process and then a lot of things happen before you have a good communication strategy. I'll take notes of that. Someone taking notes for me? Um, last week I had a funny, funny uh, meeting with a uh, IT manager of an, uh, who, well, an, an, let's say a Dutch health institute. He called me away the week before and he said we have a problem, we have uh, about 600, 700 uh, licenses of Microsoft Office, we sold them, we, we bought them, sorry, in 2003, we never made any reservations, we have no budget and we have to, we, we have to make savings. When we buy new versions, a uh, new license structure, uh, we need 900 of them and it's 225,000 euros a year we don't have and we need to make savings. So we need to save money, come to me and let's talk because I've seen LibreOffice and I've found LibreOffice for collaborate. I said, okay, we have a meeting and uh, some nice introductions. A kind of man, we, we, uh, it's a good talk. Um, and I say to him, well, of course, the reason that you give, it, it's, it's quite common that people will say, oh, we need to save money. Uh, but, but then the good thing was that I found out that that man already had done a lot of his homework. He started, uh, let's say, half a year back to cut uh, the, the wire between the mailing, the, the calendaring and, and the mail and the office. And he already planned or did some internal investigation in order to link that might link to the office suite. So that, that's a positive thing, if you have a meeting like that, then you talk with an IT manager that calls, I need to save money, help me, but who also has a lot of understanding and knows that a lot needs to be done, and that's a good sparing part, and that in, in, in let's say half an hour time you can do a lot of work and have a good understanding, and then it's only a small step before you can say, okay, we start with how do we communicate and that's what I explained to him okay, once we are at this point we say it's good it's a good way to go we start communicating thanks but anyway, in, in, of course the, we should consider the, the, the migration protocol apart from the fact that it must be grouped yes. so the, by definition I mean uh, this is just a kind of reference to attract people you on the middle of the side of my presentation. Yes, that's good. Yeah, I agree. So, uh, looking at time, I have only 30 minutes. No problem. Yeah, I, I shut up. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> okay, the, the discussion is what we had. Um, so, um, we might consider to have few additionals about communication and a bit about uh, details, be careful, there might be more things to discuss, to consider, and I had a few notes myself. And apart from that, uh, in my opinion, it's uh, just still a great document. I've seen a version uh, with a bit uh, adapted, uh, improved English, uh, which, which could make sense too, because my English is quite, well, record. Much better, but no, but maybe more American English or whatever. But mine is more Italian than yours. English <laughs> might be I have no idea. Your English is more Dutch than mine. Uh, <laughs> no, English. What do you prefer? I don't know. I, I mean, I, I would prefer Oxford English, but I was not born well, there. We have people who can help with that in the community. So, uh, so then, 
If there are no more questions or remarks, oh yes, please. I actually have one, one question. Uh, I haven't read the protocol because I didn't know it exists. Yes. Uh, I will read it now. But in how far is the protocol also uh, looking at the IT architectural surroundings? Yeah. Like you have a office suite, yes. which of course has to be somehow connected to groupware, like a code of, for instance. Yes. Is there some way that the migration protocol also takes this into account? Uh, hardly. The, the protocol is it, descriptive. Uh, that it explains you have to look at our software and you have to look at all the uh, things that um, interfere interfer with, with your office documents and yeah, processes. Yeah, because if you want to migrate yes. from Microsoft Office out to this in civil yes. part of office and that is the combination of bookware and an office suite. Yes. Is the suite marriage that is Microsoft yeah. Office. To be honest, uh, as far as I can remember, it's the, the, uh, the way the calendar is mentioned separately, but as you say, it's one of the important features that people always have to consider. Anyway, in the old, in the old situation where it was a very tight part for most, funny when you look at, uh, uh, for example, uh, local administrations in the Netherlands, quite a, quite a few work with. Um, um, groupware from uh, oh, oh, how do you call it? Uh, <laughs> always forgot the name. The uh, groupwise. Groupwise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. groupwise. Yeah. 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 a lot of migration from groupwise to code. Yes. So, so then in, in, in those situations, the, the coupling between uh, the office suite and, and the calendar doesn't exist at all. But it's good. Maybe it, it's an addition, a useful addition to uh, as one of the main points that. that and it's not mentioned to be a, a step by step uh, <coughs> handbook that any anyone can use to do a successful migration. It, it's not well, it's a guideline, I get that. Yeah, and, and, and a communication a guideline and a communication strategy from the document foundation that we show look, this is how we how we experience it. It's good that it's there anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, in addition to groupware, you have all the, let, let's call them third-party software you, you interact because you have, for instance, the first one is the DRP, so you have SAP, you might have SAP, you might have Salesforce, you may have, I mean, there might be many of those software and of course so the, 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 the problem, the underlying problem can be many. Uh, the idea of the protocol is to show that we have a methodology. Yeah. Uh, but then, of course, you have to call someone to help you. Otherwise, if we write the, you know, the check, the 60-point checklist, then everyone will do the, the, the migration by themselves. And this is not our objective. The objective is that they get community members, they pay community members, yeah to do the migration, because this is the only way that we can support the ecosystem. Otherwise, if every company does the migration by themselves... Well, they think they can do it. No. I, you know, yes. you, we give the idea that... that it, we must give the idea that it's feasible, but not by yourself. Yeah. But it might be also, from a marketing perspective, a very nice addition to also promote some other open source solutions to common problems. Might just be an idea. Yeah, so, sorry, can you repeat from a marketing perspective? Oh, sorry, uh, yeah. uh, uh, um, yeah. from a marketing point of view, yeah. it might also be a good opportunity to promote some other open standards compliant solutions in the architecture landscape yeah. of, uh, yes. of a company. That might be an opportunity. Yes. At least that's to mention that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, not, yeah, not going to win. With, yes, okay, good, thanks. So, and of course, we need a lot of companies that uh, hire people from the ecosystems and whatever, whatever uh, professionals that support open source. Uh, because uh, once every few years, I need some extra painting on my ship. <laughs> as the okay, thanks for your attention. And, uh,